everyone, in this video we're going to be doing another critique. This time is of a Paul Thomas. Now Paul has sent me in a photo of himself with my book, uh, as you can see to the right here. Okay, so he's done a little bit of off-camera flash or something on that one, and he's holding my book. So that's the new rule. If you bought my book, you get to the top of the list uh, for the critiquing. So he's getting critiqued today. So Paul tells me some details about himself. He's an enthusiast level photographer in South Wales. Okay, okay. He's been shooting for a few years and he started with a Canon 350D and he's hoping to start uh, to book weddings next year. Ooh, okay. Currently he shoots with a Nikon D300 and he's aiming to go full frame in the fall. In the fall. Okay, that's how old my uh, submissions are. Uh, so this was back in September that he sent this one. Ooh, sorry about that. Um, and some of you may have sent in uh, critiques from even earlier than that, so I'm sorry I haven't got through to them yet, but I am trying to do every single one. And again, if you want to go to the top of the queue, get the book. Anyway, let, let's go on to his shots. Okay, so here's first shot. Uh, it's called High Key Portrait. Okay, it is high key and it's a portrait, but not of a human. It's actually of a lemur, I think, and I've seen this picture before. I did in a uh, critique somewhere else. Um, taken at Bristol Zoo. Okay, this is cool. I love the challenge of taking photos at enclosures. Indeed, it is a, quite a challenge. And he's saying that he's pretty much just played in Lightroom with a high key kind of look uh, to give it a look which you don't normally get with kind of animal shots. Uh, and I agree, it's absolutely cool. I think it's great. You've got eye contact straight into the lemur. And the cool thing is you can't really see in its eyes the reflection that he's in an enclosure. Um, so that's quite cool. I don't know where lemurs normally hang out. If it's kind of a snowy situation, that looks good. What I would do is I'd definitely have a logo in this shot because you've got all this nice dead space at the side. Um, which would be good for your own little Paul Thomas logo, I think. Uh, so that's good, it's good he's in the side there, but I think because you're just blowing out the side, you either have a background or something which is either complementary or contrastingly complementary with the animal, but here, just because it's totally blown out, that's where I think it'd be a good place to put a logo. Uh, otherwise, it is just nothing, or some text, or a poem, or write something on it, something like that. But yeah, good good plan, and that'd be fine if it's something for an advertising shot as well for the local zoo, saying, look, we can put like text down the side. I think that's a good idea. Okay, here's your next one. This one's just called Captivity. Uh, this is a... Mo uh, this monkey was looking down at me from above. Ah, you wouldn't tell it. Well, you, I suppose it's impossible to tell. You can't tell whether it's straight on, above, or below, or anything like that. So that's kind of interesting that you've got that kind of different angle. However, it's not obvious in the shot. It's just kind of a headshot. What is amazing is the super shallow depth of field, how his nose is blurry, yet his eyes are sharp. So great work in getting the eyes sharp here. What it is, though, it's almost a bit too much of a just a head shot, as in... You can't really see that there is much else to the monkey. It's just kind of head and fur. Um, so, so cool in getting the eyes. I'm sure if people owned this kind of monkey, that'd be a great shot. I would love that. But I, I, if you didn't tell me, uh, in fact, have you even told me it's a monkey? I'm just guessing. Yeah, this monkey was uh, taken. Yes. Um, yeah, cool. Okay. I thought the look would disprove anyone thinking that they're happy in a cage. Oh, it's a sad monkey. Okay. Um, I also love that the enclosure is reflected. Ah, yes, so you can see that in the eyes. Uh, cool. Yes. But again, so, so effectively, this is really all about the eyes, the, 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 the close-up in the eyes. So obviously, I think getting even closer to this, where almost the, the background is the reflection in the eye. Uh, is getting even closer there. I've, I've did a shot once somewhere. I don't know if it was it in my book. No, but it was somewhere where I've done it where it's just like an owl's eyeball. It's so close up. Although it was, it was taken with a 105mm macro and it was through a cage. You could just see the whole cage in its eye, which is what you're getting here. So I would say get even closer with this one. But yeah, good work. Oh, now, wait a minute. I think I'm being too nice. I think I'm not being harsh enough, right? I'm going to have to... Just because you bought my book doesn't mean I'm going to be unharsh. So I'm going to have to, like, get a bit more hardcore here. Okay, what's this next one? Hmm. Uh, Mid-flight. Uh, it was very hard to get the shot, but I think the texture is great. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about it? Hmm. Uh, it was taken at Simoids Yat Butterfly Farm. Okay, that's... a I can't, ah, oh, it's probably Welsh, that's why I can't understand what you're saying. Um, oh, wow, wait, that's in mid-flight? Uh, okay, that is cool, that is actually very cool, the fact that 
you've got it again in such a shallow depth of field. I'm going to have to go in closer on this one. That the that part is in focus, but that's out of focus, and so is the out. That is actually a quite a spectacular capture to be able to get that in mid-flight and what I would want is I'd want more detail uh, maybe in the original photo that you've got there is more detail but there's black and white I, I'm just wondering if this butterfly has colours because you lose quite a lot of the detail in the fact that it is just really black in its eyes so that's where I think this one might be a bit more you know, this is a beautiful butterfly bring in the colour if you want kind of desaturate the background a little bit don't go selective colorization but desaturate the background but let this butterfly have its lovely colors that we can see here and um, also it is a little bit too dark the background um, also there's a lot going on in the background although you've got a very shallow depth of feel the background here is distracting like you've got blob there blob there blob there big blob there um, and other blobs down here so that's where I'm just wondering maybe is, is some of this blur added in post maybe I don't know um, but yeah I would want a less distracting background especially when you've got a black and white background and a black and white butterfly but the fact that you've captured it the way that you have is pretty darn impressive uh, so yeah sort out cleaning out the background Okay, this next one, bit of a panoramic shot here, like that. Uh, it's called Alone But Content. A picture of my lady walking on a mountain behind her house. I wanted to silhouette, but uh, I wanted to silhouette as I felt the shape was unusual. And it is. It's, uh, it's a nice, lovely sunset silhouette with the human subject in the centre, which I think works with this shot. It does have a form of symmetry in it. Good use of thirds, where the, the, the horizon is just in the bottom third and the subject's in the middle. So I think this is very good. Would it have benefited from being um, having even the, the, the your lady in the left-hand third as well? I don't think it would. I think it looks really... Oh, well, actually, I quite like that. I kind of like that as well, but I like this shot here, like that, because of this lovely glow that you've got, or dirt or pollution in the background. Um, so over here we've got a really bit of kind of a gooey blur around that, which is a little bit, it, I am seeing that. I think most normal people wouldn't, obviously I'm not normal, um, but I think uh, I'm really, really noticing whatever this kind of halo that this has, which everything else doesn't have. But yeah, I think that is a cool shot, and I think it is an unusual shot, and I love how the, the stumps and the tree bit are kind of human equaling heights as well. Um, I, it looks like your your lady has got something in her hand, which I would like, do you know what I'd really like? I'd like if that was a stick or a lead for a dog, and it'd be a lovely shot of a woman going out, walking her dog first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening. I think that it, it definitely has a feel to the shot. Uh, alone but content, I think the name doesn't necessarily go quite so well with it. But maybe it does, maybe it does, but I'm kind of really thinking this more of like an evening's walk or something like that. Um, alone but content. See, alone... Oh, right. I would choose a different word on that because she's not alone. It's her with the posts and that. There's things going on in this. Okay. Confusing. Next one. Oh my god, it's huge. Oh my god. Ugh. Ugh, right. Uh, not a good side. No, I don't think they ever have a good side. Wait, is that his bum? Wait, what is it? Not a good side. Uh, one of my first macro shots, my god, it's a macro shot, taken with the 105mm f2.8 Nikon, yeah! Um, we'd love critique on this as macro is pretty daunting to start. We'd love, we'd love critique on this as macro is pretty daunting to start. I don't know, don't know what that means, don't know what that means. But that's cool. And what I do like, you've got a great... Totally non-distracting background. You've got such a shallow depth of field that some of its legs are blurry as they come towards you, which is great because it's a real three-dimensional shot. I like how you've got it in the kind of thirds or not totally central, and you've kept all of the leg in. This is really good here, how we've got the leg going from all the way from here, oh, yuck, um, up until there. But the thing is, I don't know, is that its butt? No, that can't be its head. I don't know, but it's a bit of a 
nothing, it's, it's like it has head chopped off or eaten or something, you can't really see that that's its face. So some spiders have got real mega faces which are just like, oh my god, that's rag. This one you can't really tell, it's more just like a bit of a body of something. And like, is that its eye? It's weird, it's an unusual kind of thing. But yeah, you've got it all in the shot, again, cool, like it. Um, Maybe a little, this one might benefit from a little bit of an increase in saturation. Not so much the saturation in the blue, but saturation in the yellows and the oranges. I'm talking about like 10, 15%, uh, just so this bit here is a little bit more punchy. Um, I think it's all it could do with. But yeah, okay. Uh, and at the end, you've said, I hereby give Don Bauer the right to replicate many of his But thank you very much. Okay. Um, Paul, I think these are good shots, uh, great wildlife shots. It shows that you don't need to go to foreign countries to get great shots of like animals. You don't need to go on safaris, you can just go to your local zoo or enclosure or butterfly farm. Or in your bedroom where there's giant spiders. Uh, so yeah, good work. Um, do more. Think about the names. And possibly get even closer. Okay, hope that helps. Thanks a lot everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye.